Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, I have a video lesson for you on how to find the volume of a sphere. Our objectives today are that you will find the volume of spheres and hemispheres, and that you will find the radius of a sphere when given the volume. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today. What is the relationship between the volume of a sphere and the volume of a cylinder? So in the previous two lessons of this playlist, first we found the volume of a cylinder, and then second we learned to find the volume of a cone, and now we're going to add our third lesson in this playlist of finding the volume of a sphere and understanding its relationship to the volume of a cylinder. So first let's talk about what is a sphere. By definition, a sphere is a three-dimensional figure where each point on the surface is the same distance from the center of the sphere. So what that means is we have our center point in here and that no matter what direction we go to, we are going to have the radius connecting from the center to any outer edge. So any edge is connected by the radius, which is a straight line from the center to the circumference or outer edge of the sphere. Now let's talk about the formula for the volume of a sphere. When we have all the only dimension that we have that we can measure on a sphere is our radius, just like on a circle. We can find circumference, we can find surface area because it's a three-dimensional figure, and we're going to find volume today. So the volume formula is given as four thirds the product, so multiply by pi, then multiply by the radius cubed. Now let's understand where this formula came from and how it came to be. After we, first we want to talk about a hemisphere, which is half of the sphere. So you might be asked, so think about the top of an ice cream cone. The inside would have the entire sphere, but on the outside, we would only see this, or a barn silo is another one that has a hemisphere on top of it. So sometimes when you're asked to find the volume of a composite figure, you might have a hemisphere that you have to deal with. And just understand that you take the volume of a sphere and you multiply it by one half or divide it by two. So there's not a special formula, you just need to recognize that it's half of a sphere. Now, when we talk about the relationship of a volume of a sphere to the volume of a cylinder, we've just learned that we have our sphere and the volume formula is four thirds times pi times r cubed. And then earlier in this playlist, we learned that the volume of a cylinder was found by pi r squared times h. Now, if we say that the radius of the sphere is the same as the radius of the cylinder, and we look at this, the height of the sphere is radius plus radius. So the height of our cylinder, radius plus radius, so we're gonna change h to be 2r. So let's go down to, we have the same radius here as in our sphere, and remember height, radius connected by another radius. So here in the sphere, we would call that diameter, but that diameter is also the height of a cylinder, which is two radii. So now we're gonna replace h with 2r. When I multiply my like terms here, two times pi times r squared times r is r cubed. So the volume of the cylinder in terms of the radius is two pi r cubed. Now we're gonna compare this to the volume of the sphere. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now that we could take a sphere and it's gonna fill this two thirds full. When we did the cone, it took three cones to fill this. One sphere will fill this cylinder two thirds of the way full. And here's the proof in that. If I say two thirds of this volume of the cylinder, two thirds times two is four thirds and it matches. So if I took this sphere and I filled it with water and I poured it into a cylinder with the same radius and the same height, the height is the same as the diameter, it would be two thirds full. So that's where this formula came from. So now we can understand that the volume of a sphere is two thirds the volume of a cylinder with the same radius and height. Now let's use our volume formula for a sphere and find the volume of this specific sphere. We're told that the radius is six inches 
and that's the only unknown that we have. So we're going to take our volume formula, 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, and replace the radius with 6. So when we do that, it looks like this, 4 thirds times 3.14 for pi times the radius 6 cubed. So on your calculator, you're going to do 6 cubed, which if you don't have the cube button would be 6 times 6 times 6 times 3.14, multiply by 4, divide by 3 and you should have gotten 904 and 32 hundredths, and don't forget, it's inches cubed. So often, my students have the most difficult time using their calculator with this formula, and it's usually the four-thirds. Remember, when you're using a calculator and a fraction, multiply by the numerator, divide by the denominator. So review that again. Six times six times six, so 6 multiplied by itself 3 times, times 3.14, times 4, divided by 3. Try it at home, and you should get this value. Now it's your turn. I would like you to find the volume of this sphere with this information. Please pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So we're going to start with our volume formula. The only information we've been given is our radius is four and a half inches, so we're going to replace r with four and a half and replace pi with 3.14. So this is what it looks like. So now it's time for your calculator. 4.5 times 4.5 times 4.5 multiplied by 3.14, multiply by 4, divide by 3, and you should get 381 and 51 hundredths inches cubed. Now let's try this one. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now and find the volume of a sphere with a diameter of 14 using 3.14 for pi. Pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So now, trick. Hopefully they didn't trick you. Diameter of 14, we have to find our radius. So we know that if our diameter is 14, our radius is half of that, and that is 7. So going to our formula, we're going to do 4 thirds times 3.14 for pi times our radius 7 cubed. So on your calculator, 7 times 7 times 7 times 3.14 multiplied by 4 and divide by 3. You should have gotten 1,436 rounding to the nearest hundredth, so 3 hundredths. And don't forget your units, inches cubed. Now let's find the volume of a hemisphere. To find the volume of a hemisphere, we have a radius of 8. So we're going to put our formula here. So our formula for volume of a sphere multiplied by half. Our radius is 8, so we're going to replace r with 8. So on your calculator, 8 times 8 times 8 times 3.14 times 4 divide by 3. Now divide by 2, because we want half of that, so you should have gotten 1,071 and 8 tenths inches cubed. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and pause the video, find the volume of the hemisphere, and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's the solution. So we're going to use our sphere formula to find the volume, and then we're going to multiply it by half or divide by 2. We're told that our radius is 10, so we're going to put that into our formula. And now we're ready for our calculator. So 10 cubed, which is 1,000, times 3.14, times 4, divide by 3, and then divide that solution by 2, or multiply by 0 0.5. Your volume is 2,093 and 3 tenths inches cubed. Now let's talk about finding the radius when we're given the volume. So we're going to write down the volume of a sphere formula, and we're going to plug in what we know. They've given us this volume in terms of pi, so we're going to replace v with 36 pi. Now we want to solve this equation for our unknown r, the radius. So both sides have the symbol pi, so we can divide both sides by pi. And so on the right, we're left with 4 thirds times r cubed. Well, to isolate r cubed, we're going to do the inverse of multiply by 4 thirds. 
which is to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of four thirds is three fourths. What I do to the right side, I must also do to the left side of an equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three fourths. When I multiply four thirds by three fourths, it equals one, leaving me r cubed on the right. 36 times three fourths, 36 divided by four is nine, nine times three is 27, that equals r cubed. Again, if you're doing this on your calculator, 36 times three, divide by four, multiply by the numerator, divide, remember that fraction bar means divide, by four. Now, the inverse of cube is to cube root. So I'm gonna take the cube root of each side of the equation, because again, whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. The cube root of 27 is three, and the cube root of r cubed is r. So our radius is three inches. Now it's your turn. We're told that to find the radius of a sphere with a volume of 256 thirds, and don't forget there's a little pi symbol here. Go ahead and pause the video, find the radius, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So here's our formula. We're gonna put in our volume, we're gonna divide both sides by pi, and then we're gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal of four thirds, which is three fourths, which gives us three divided by three is one, 256 divided by four is 64, four thirds times three fourths is one, leaving the r cubed on the right. Find the cube root of both sides, and we get that our radius is equal to four inches. And there you have it. That is how you find the volume of a sphere and the relationship to a cylinder, as well as how to solve for r, the radius, when given the volume. I thank you for joining me at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.